there's several factors that makes the Academy of American Studies unique, one of which is that this school emphasizes American history. So citywide, students typically take U.S. history in 11th grade. Our students take a U.S. history course every grade in high school, 9 through 12, in conjunction with any of their other social studies classes, while at the same time still supporting all of the core curriculum that students need to graduate. Additionally, small tidbits being that our classes are on a block schedule. They don't meet every day for 45 minutes. They meet three times a week for 79 minutes, which is college preparatory. Okay, so um, we're going to start. Our aim for today is up on the whiteboard. It says, does Alexander the Great deserve his reputation? As Ms. M and myself told you last class, we're going to hopefully have a really great debate today. This class today is culminating their unit in ancient Greece. The teacher, Ms. Rapocio, has set up a debate that the students are going to engage in the age-old question of does Alexander the Great deserve his title? When the students come in, there's going to be a brief do now where the teacher is allowing them to finish gathering a little bit of evidence that they're going to be researching further in the period. The do now is we have to finish our role plays from last class because we got cut with time. So we have four groups that had to go um, for the hero side. So we're looking at the perspective of the conquerors. My name is Alexander the Great and I, uh, burned, I burned Persepolis to avenge the Greeks because I admire their culture. My name is Diodorus. I am one of Alexander the Great's uh, finest soldiers. Uh, he shows great respect for the Persians that he conquered. He keeps their culture and religion, and he also wore their clothing even though he conquered them. Hello, I'm Mazius, a Persian satrap. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, basically a ruler. Alexander spared me and made me act as one of the governors in one of the many areas he conquered. He is really not as bad as you all think because he allowed for people to continue practicing their religion. Okay, good. So let's give a round of applause to that group for going first. Once the do now is complete, they're going to have a mini lesson where she's going to touch on some of the main topics. And then for C, um, he was doing it for revenge for his father's death. He had superior military tactics. We have deserves the land because he's growing his empire, displayed honor when fighting, defeated an army of elephants, let the Indians still rule their territory, and was tolerant of the Hindu culture. After that concludes, they're going to break into their groups. They're going to receive about 25 minutes to further their research to be able to refer to the evidence that they're going to use in the debate. So we're going to split you up back into your two groups. Remember how we gave you the chart paper and you started to build your conclusions and your arguments? You're going to have the next 30 minutes to work as a group again to do that. You could use these organizers that you just completed. You could use the notes from the class um, before. And we also put together for you these, um, a short packet of a couple different sources that you can also pull evidence from. We're going to give you the chart paper and the markers. Do exactly as you did last time because there wasn't a thing we would change, okay? So right now we have students that are broken up into two groups and they're making the argument on whether or not Alexander the Great deserves his reputation. We have a group arguing that yes indeed he was a hero and then we have a group arguing that he was actually a villain. So this is all leading up to their summative assessment which is an argumentative essay um, on the same topic. And just write M, Empire. You don't have to write like the Macedonian Empire. Okay, so I just want to check in. Um, I heard you start saying it before about the influence. What argument can you guys make about who specifically Alexander is influencing? Right, the people he's ruling, right? So it's good for the people at the time. But who else is he influencing that would be important to history? The whole known world at that time. Specifically who, though? Napoleon. Like, okay. Other, um, other 
other leaders. Yeah, other, other leaders. leaders, okay? He's a model to other leaders. Now, what's going to be the biggest argument then about who he inspires? They destroyed everything. Right. So, so if you bring, you have to kind of bring it up, right, that he's influencing these really important leaders. But when you bring that up, if any of them remember, he also influenced people like Hitler, right? So you have to walk the line very carefully between the good and the bad there, okay? So just, just as a coach, I'm going to coach you, Ms. Ann's going to coach them, just give you a piece of but there's a difference. When you argue, you have to have information. Supporting detail. You can't just be like, oh, that makes no sense. Give facts from the handout and give that back to them. When the debate begins, the students will engage back and forth for 25 minutes, supporting claims that they have researched for the debate. Okay, time. Please start to find your seats. On either side. The debate last time was awesome, okay? Just to make sure that we have a very organized setting and that everybody has a chance to say what they need to say, we're going to do it in the following way. Um, whatever side goes first, we'll have a minute or two to give their opening statement. So if this side goes first, they give their opening statement. We'll come over to this side, you give yours, okay? Then we'll go back to the side that starts. You get three minutes to give all of your evidence. As you're listening to them, jot down the points that you know you're going to want to argue, okay? Then we'll come over to them. They're not going to be able to argue against you. You're just going to say your evidence and you listen for the points you want to argue. And then we'll open it um, up to about five to ten minutes, depending how enthusiastic you are of open debate, where you could start cross-examining and argue those points. And then uh, probably a minute or two for each closing statement. All right. um, Alexander the Great did not deserve his reputation. When conquering many civilizations, he committed dozens of harsh crimes against women and children by selling them into slavery. He also took the lives of a, uh, lives of a vast amount of people. Alexander, quote, the great, was a cold and emotional killer. So we're going to come back to this side. No arguments yet. You're going to provide as much evidence as you can to back up your argument. You have about three minutes to do so. Okay, so as they're making their arguments, listen to them so you could start to try and pick them apart. He was a military strategist. He was, a, he was like a really smart military strategist. And even though... I mean, that doesn't show that he's good or that he's bad. It's just kind of neutral. He did it for the sake of making the world a better place, kind of, because he controlled most of the known world and he, he combined all cultures together so that he can make Hellenism. And Hellenism basically took all the um, things that made a, made a culture so good and made it basically everyone's life easier throughout the, all of the Macedonian Empire. He did not let any Egyptian citizens help um, build the city of Alexandria, which is now a really, really important city in Egypt. And he did not let them build it whatsoever. And also what David said about um, the Macedonians killing 80,000 um, enemy soldiers. First of all, those are soldiers. Uh, they are going against the Macedonian army. They are going to battle so that they can kill them. And also, uh, I just have a question for you. Uh, in World War II, what do you think about the USA uh, going to war against Germany? They killed people there too, right? But what did they do it for, right? They did it, they did it to save the, they did it first of all to save, um, to save the Jews that are over there during the Holocaust. And also they did it because they, they were at war. They were against Germany. They were at war and in war you kill people. It's just, and it's just what war is. The reason why we do this in this class with the roles being assigned to the student, whether it is their preference or not, is that we find it very important historically to teach students to be able to defend a claim that may or may not be their own opinion. Because often in the past, when we study historical topics, they may or may not be accepted in today's times. So this allows students to understand both perspectives equally before coming to a conclusion of their own um, historical opinion on the event. All right, I got an argument for you right here. 
All right, you say that he didn't, like he might not have ordered it, right? But quote, it's a quote. Then in a drunken state, he allowed his men to burn down the great palace and its surrounding temples. Explain that to me. He ordered his soldiers, after he conquered this civilization, he ordered his soldiers to go off and to like burn down the entire city and surrounding temples. Explain that to me. Is he really a good person? If he was really a villain, and w then why would other leaders follow in his footsteps and kind of want to be just like him? How, how is treating people fairly when you're selling them slavery and killing them mercilessly? Okay, well what I wanted to say was um, towards what Peter said, and he said if he was really a villain, why would other leaders follow him? Well, um, basically, well, um, I disagree with that because he set an example for tyrants, and tyrants are bad leaders such as Napoleon or Julius Caesar or Hitler, so he's, not, he's setting an example for bad leaders. Um, it, that isn't Alexander's fault because he wouldn't have known that um, uh, bad people would have taken over, you know, his beliefs and stuff. So um, he just set an example for like the future, and you know that's a good thing. Kayla, um, so Alexander was trying to do something for the better of the people. He couldn't have known that other people's intentions of what he has done would have been twisted around. They could have like nitpicked the bad things that he did and used those and like threw out the good things that he also did. He did do some things that were questionable, but his overall judgment of what he thought he was doing was the right thing. For the sake of time, we have to do closing statements, okay? So um, this side is going to go first. And then you'll give your final closing statement. At the end of the class, what is really going to be important to notice is that during the debate, she assigned roles to the students that they may or may not have preferred. During the share out, they have the opportunity and the conclusion to decide if they want to reinforce the assigned role that they were given, or if they want to go on with their own opinion and say why they've changed their mind. And that's, for the most part, what that class is going to be about. This was even more intense than the last one. So um, we saw some of you writing down uh, furiously at the arguments that are being made. Um, so we are going to take this into one further step. So when we meet tomorrow, we're going to do a workshop on the argumentative essay that goes along with this. So we'll push your test to Monday, and we'll do the workshop tomorrow so that we could also do a little review at the end. So is that fair? Yes. OK. So. To help us with tomorrow, and we have about three minutes left, on a final post-it, okay, if you abandon all sides, you heard great arguments on both sides, if you could abandon your position and truly write down what you feel is to be correct right now, we want you to just write a thesis statement and then stick it into your notebook so you have it for tomorrow, okay? So overall, based on the arguments you heard, does Alexander deserve his reputation? Students are learning to take a pre-existing argument and then evaluate it. And what I mean by that is they're determining the strengths and weaknesses of that argument. They're then asked to generate a claim about it. So in this case, they have to either say either yes, Alexander was deserving of his title, or no, he wasn't, but then provide the evidence through their research. So that's the, the important piece right there in terms of getting them to understand the design of an argument Beyond that, there's a separate thing that the students are supposed to learn. They're supposed to really be able to learn their own strengths and weaknesses in terms of speaking and listening skills, because in a debate like this, it's twofold. There's the content aspect that the students are, ho we're hoping for the students to learn about Alexander the Great, but it's also their own interpersonal communication skills as well. They hear a question, they have to be able to respond, they have to be able to articulate a clearly developed answer. So it's really two very important aspects. It's the content pieces and then the necessary skills that align with it. At the end of the class though, the students will be taking home an argumentative essay assignment that will fully wrap up the unit itself. And through that, she's able to assess two things. She's been able to assess their spoken participation class and then individually their written assessment, their answer to provide information about how well they understood the topic being debated.